Hey guys, welcome back to a brand new season of Fantasy Tift. My name is Julian, and this is the very first regular season episode of the year. I'm so excited to be moving from my preseason content to my regular season content now, and I really am excited for this 2023-24 season. It's going to be a lot of fun starting on Tuesday with Connor Bedard versus Sidney Crosby on the first day of the year. I'm definitely I'm going to be watching that one. I definitely marked my calendar for that one. It's going to be a lot of fun. And overall, guys, just make sure that you're having fun this year in fantasy hockey because that's what it's all about at the end of the day. Now, guys, if you're new to my channel, you probably are unfamiliar with the format of my videos. So what I usually do in these waiver wire videos, which I put out every single week, I talk about the schedule for the coming week. So what it looks like, what days are less busy, what days are more busy. Then I talk about what teams have favorable schedules, which teams have less favorable schedules. And then I go into what players you should look at grabbing for the week or for a longer time than just this week. I start with forwards, then I talk about defense that you can grab and then goalies. Before I jump into this video though, guys, please leave a like and hit that subscribe button if you haven't already. If you're new here, trust me, you're gonna to wanna to be subscribed for the whole entire season. I'll be putting out these videos to help you make the best ads to win every single week of your fantasy hockey season. I'm trying to hit 6,000 subscribers, guys, so hitting that button would mean the world to me too. And I'm getting awfully close to that number, so please hit that subscribe button and help me reach my goal. So let's take a look at the schedule, guys. And as you can see, there are no games on Monday because the season only starts on Tuesday with three games. Wednesday, six games. On Thursday, there are seven. Friday, two. Saturday, 14. So that's a real busy night. And then Sunday, two games. So basically, if we're looking at off nights, which is nights that less than half the teams in the NHL are playing, which is when you're usually able to actually fit players in your lineup. Well, six out of the seven nights are off nights, right? Thursday is busy-ish, but you're probably still have a little bit of room in your lineup on Thursday. So I'm not gonna be focusing on players that play on off nights really for pickups for ads this week. It just doesn't make a lot of sense because you can pretty much fit most players in your lineup other than on a Saturday night, you're gonna be able to fit anybody in your lineup for the games that they're playing, probably at least this week. All right, so let's talk about teams that have a less good schedule this week. And the teams that do not have the best schedule this week are the teams that only play one game. There are four teams that really only play one game this week, which hurts your fantasy, your team a little bit. But honestly, you're not going to be dropping anybody on the first week just because their team only plays one game. They're definitely going to be more valuable for you down the stretch. Less so this week, but that's okay. Try to get through this week. It's a short week, so it's kind of an unfair week-ish, honestly, in my opinion. Should probably have been a double week, in my opinion. But don't worry about it. If you lose this week, not a big deal. It's a bit of a weird week, so don't worry too much about that. But the teams that do only play one game are Arizona, Dallas, the New York Islanders, and the Washington Capitals. Now, there are eight teams that have a little bit more of a favorable schedule that actually play three games this week, which is the most that any team plays this week. And those teams are Carolina, Chicago, Nashville, Ottawa, Pittsburgh, Seattle, the Tampa Bay Lightning, and the Vegas Golden Knights. So let's jump into some forward options that you can consider adding to your fantasy team before the season even starts. Maybe you got some IRs that you have to throw on IR and grab some players that'll help you out. Well, these are some players that you should be picking up. First on the list is Tyler Bertuzzi. He's playing the top line with Marner and Austin Matthews in Toronto. He's not a top power play, but just that deployment is incredibly good for him and he should have a really good year if he can stay healthy he's healthy right now so you should be probably picking him up right now like that a lot available in 41 percent of leagues right now nikolai ehlers it's unbelievable to me that he is 50 percent rostered only i understand he's had a rough couple of years with a little bit of injuries and stuff like that but his upside is a top 50 player easily so if he plays to even you know part of that he has so much value and i can see him having a really amazing year this year he's somebody that you guys should be picking up in most league format unless you're in a really shallow league and even then ehlers should be owned tom wilson is the next guy if you're in a league that has hits tom wilson is incredibly valuable he's a top line guy with alexander ovechkin probably gonna get top power play this year as well in washington so he's gonna have a good amount of value um tom wilson in my opinion other than Ovechkin, Carlson, and maybe Kemper is the next most valuable player on the Capitals and definitely somebody that you're going to want to own if hits are a thing in your league, giving you a safe floor every single night like Tom Wilson this year. And then I have Ivan Barbashev, the Vegas Golden Knights, playing on the top line with Jack Eichel and Jonathan Marshall. So it's a good place to be. He's not top power play, but 
Your stat deployment's pretty good. And Vegas has got a good schedule this week. So even if you're just streaming them for the week, Vegas plays three times. They play on Tuesday, Thursday, and Saturday. So if you have room for him on those three dates, or even just Tuesday and Thursday, then drop him for somebody else, it's a pretty good streamer option for you. Also, Chandler Stevenson from the Vegas Golden Nice Way don't have written here is someone who's also not rostered in that many leagues, and he is actually top power play and second line with Mark Stone. So that could be another option that you look at if you're looking to stream a Vegas Golden Knights player for the first week of the season. Arturi Lekkonen is somebody that I'm liking right now, only owned in 39% of leagues, but he's top power play with McKinnon and Rantanen. Uh, that's something that I like, and he's also second line with the Chushkin and Ryan Johansson is what the lines are looking like right now. That's someone that I'm definitely going to take a chance on here. He's someone that definitely can do well for you. The next guy is Connor Brown on the Edmonton Oilers. Now, why do I like Connor Brown this year? He's playing on the top line right now with Connor McDavid and Evander Kane. That is an amazing place to be. Obviously, he's not top power play right now, but he's already got chemistry with McDavid. He used to play with him in juniors and did incredibly well. So the chemistry is already established, and I think Connor Brown has himself an amazing breakout campaign here. Josh Norris, 29% owned only. The Sens also played three games this week, so that's something to consider. And Josh Norris is going to be their second line center in all likelihood. And he's someone who was very, very, very good a couple years ago. And then last year was kind of, you know, missed almost the whole season due to injury. But if he can actually stay healthy this year, Josh Norris can have himself an amazing season. He's super, super talented and should be added in more league. Unfortunately, he's locked in as a center. So if you have a lot of those, you probably can't add him. But if you do somehow have room on your team, Josh Norris might be somebody to consider here. The Nick Schmaltz on the Arizona Coyotes is somebody that I absolutely love. He's one of my favorite players in the league, and I think he's super underrated. He played on the top line with Clayton Keller, which already is fantastic, and he plays on the top power play as well. And if you saw at the end of the season, him and Keller and Hayden, that top line that they're sticking with this year, developed some incredible chemistry, and if they can keep that up going into this year, Nick Schmaltz could be an absolute steal and if he's available to you on the waiver wire could be worth throwing a dart at if you don't want to pick him up this week i understand because the coyotes only do play one game but after that might be definitely worth looking at him sam bennett someone that i'm absolutely loving he is injured so we'll have to keep an eye on that injury see if it's more serious than it actually you know it looks to be we'll see but sam bennett being owned in only 26 percent of the league is kind of a joke He's a top six guy in Florida, potentially top power play this year. And he's someone that gives you a safe floor because he shoots and he hits. And he's going to be playing with some really good players. In my opinion, he's easily a top 100 player this year in most league formats, especially if you count hits. It just doesn't make sense to me that he's owned in only 26% of the leagues. That is an absolute steal if you can grab him off your waiver wire or your free agency right now. Then Jonathan Drouin is someone that I never thought I'd be suggesting for fantasy hockey, but here we are. He's getting a new opportunity on a new team, and as a Habs fan, it's nice to see because he was never that happy or comfortable here in Montreal. The pressure of the media was just too much for him, and I think in Colorado, he's going to thrive. They're really giving him a good opportunity here by playing him on the top line with McKinnon and Renton, and this is the best opportunity he's ever had in his whole entire career, and if he can't shine here we can officially say that this dude's a bust. But that opportunity is worth a pickup, especially if you're in a deeper league. That's something that's really mouthwatering and something that you should be looking at. The next guy is Gabriel Velarde of the Winnipeg Jets. Right now, listed as only a center, but he should be gaining right wing eligibility at some point because he is playing on the top line right wing. Looks like he's playing with Kyle Connor and Mark Scheifele, two very good players, and it looks like he probably is going to be playing top power play as well, which would be amazing for him. That's be great deployment, and I think that he can have an amazing, uh, well, not a breakout year, because last year was, really was his breakout year in LA, but he should be able to continue that very, very hot play on a Winnipeg Jets team that doesn't have that much depth, so he's going to be one of the guys that they're, that they're going to be relying upon. So I like Velarde a lot this year, and only 16% rostered. He's someone that's a Pretty good ad if you're in a deeper league. Definitely the upside is there. Barrett Hayton is someone that I went over in my preseason content. Honestly, I did with Velarde as well. But Barrett Hayton is someone that I really am liking playing on that top line and top power play with Keller and Schmoltz. And like I said, guys, they developed some incredible chemistry towards the end of last year. Like that line was absolutely fire in the month of April last year. Like they were unstoppable scoring points left and right. 
Barrett Hayton is someone that I like a lot. Obviously, natural center makes him a little less valuable, but the points should be coming for him this year. Sean Couturier is someone who missed the entire year last year and missed a lot of the year before that as well due to an injury, but he, apparently he's back and healthy. So obviously it's a little bit risky, but he is healthy right now. And Couturier, we know his upside is a top 100 player. Whether he's able to get back to that, we'll have to see, but Couturier is an amazing, amazing hockey player. And if you can even get back to, you know, maybe 75, 80% of what he was a couple years ago, that's an absolute steal. He's only owning 13% of leagues, but his upside is incredibly, incredibly high. The ceiling is astronomical for him. So really, really do like that if you do have room for a center on your team. Jakob Rana on St. Louis Blues is playing online with Kevin Hayes and Sammy Blay. And Sammy Blay showed some nice flashes last year towards the end of the year of how good he can actually be given the right deployment. And he was playing with Rana at that point. They developed some good chemistry. And now bring in Kevin Hayes, who's no slouch his own. He's a guy who can dish out the puck. I think Vrana could have himself a good year because this dude scores goals. And if he can continue to do that in leagues that value goals more so than assists, Vrana can be someone that really does help your fantasy team. Then Kirill Marchenko is someone that I'm liking this year. He's getting some really good deployment and it shows that Columbus has confidence in this young guy. Hasn't really shown anything yet in the short NHL career that he's had so far. However, he's getting an opportunity now. Liney centering that line. He's playing on the right wing with Liney and Goudreau. That's a good line. And he's also being tried out on the top power play right now. So clearly the Blue Jackets see something in this guy that maybe uh, not everyone's seeing just yet. But I think this kid could have an explosion of a year this year and really, really break out. Might be worth adding if you're in a deeper league and he's still floating out there on the waiver wire. Then I have Thomas Novak and Luke Evangelista. And these guys were really good last year in the small amount of sample size that we saw. Novak got 41 points in 53 games, and Evangelista got 15 points in 24 games. Now, together along with Cole Smith, they're going to be making up the second line of the Predators this year. And I think they're going to get a decent opportunity here to really show what they can do this year. Novak is no longer a rookie, but Evangelista still counts as a rookie because he didn't play 25 games. He only played 24 games last year, so he has a chance to really show off what, he can, what he's made of. And I think that both these guys, while it is a bit of a gamble, can have amazing years this year and definitely worth a look in deeper leagues. And that's obviously not even mentioning Ryan O'Reilly playing on the top line with Philip Forsberg could be worth grabbing as well on the Preds. Then I have Zach Benson of the Buffalo Sabres and he's not a name that I thought I'd be mentioning this year because he just got drafted and he wasn't going that early in the draft. So nobody thought he was gonna make the team this year, but here we are and he's still on the team playing with Tage Thompson and Jeff Skinner. That's a really good place to be. Now, I'm not saying that he may not be sent back to the juniors after nine games, but the fact that he's playing right now on that top line is worth a flyer in deeper leagues. He's only listed as a left wing right now, even though he's playing on the right wing, which is a little bit stupid. So if he does keep playing on that line, he should be gaining that right wing eligibility eventually. But even with the risk of being sent back down to juniors, it might be worth taking a flyer on Zach Benson. Next guy is James Van Riemsdyk on the Boston Bruins. And originally I had Potras in that spot, but Potras got moved down to the third line center. So unfortunately the value on Boston third line is not really there. But JVR is playing on the top line with Pasternak and Zaka. And that's a really, really good place to be. And I think it's James Van Riemsdyk could have himself a decently good bounce back year. Should be owned in more than 2% of leagues. That's for sure. And then I have Ryan Donato of the Chicago Blackhawks, only 1% rostered, but he's playing right now on the top line with Connor Bedard and, and Taylor Hall. That's the only line that Chicago really has right now. And I think Donato is, might actually do well. Like he's shown flashes that he could be good in the past. And he actually looked pretty good in the preseason. So Donato is someone that I am expecting to have a bit of a decent year. At the very least, guys, if you're in a deep league, might as well just throw a dart at him for the first two games of the year. He plays on both Tuesday and Wednesday. So if he doesn't do well, you can drop him after that. No harm, no foul. But you're getting a pretty decent streamer for the first two days of the year. So I don't mind that at all. Jumping into defenseman, Mackenzie Weger at 65% rostered should be on more leagues. Guys, I do think he has a nice bounce back year this year. This guy is really, really good with peripherals. And he puts up points too without ever getting power play time. So that's... Uh, that's pretty good value there. I like him this year. Zach Wierenski, someone who should be on way more than 55% of leagues. Are you kidding me? Zach Wierenski is somebody that I really, really like this year. And I think that he's going to have an amazing, amazing season if he can stay healthy. Sean Jersey is man in the top power play in Arizona with Keller and Schmaltz. That's a good place to be. And he 
Yeah, I think he's going to have himself a great year this year. He's going to be finally getting to man a top power play the full season. So that's something that we're definitely going to be liking this year. And he's probably going to be added in more leagues given a week or two. John Klingberg, Toronto Maple Leafs, is going to be manning that top power play in Toronto. And obviously Klingberg has not been great over the past couple of years. But this deployment might be exactly what he needs to get back on track. Next is my Manscaped must add player of the video, Mike Matheson. Once again, guys, Manscaped supports fantasy tips so much that they provide an exclusive offer for our listeners. Get 20% off and free shipping with the code word fantasy tip at manscaped.com. That's 20% off and free shipping at manscaped.com with the code word fantasy tip. Be like yourself again and take charge of your life with Manscaped. Now, Manscaped, man, they got some real good products. So if you haven't already checked them out, guys, head over to manscaped.com, use my code word, you won't be disappointed. Now, why is Mike Matheson, though, my Manscaped must-add player of the video? Well, Mike Matheson, somebody that I've been repping all preseason long, guys. Mike Matheson has got a lot of upside here. He could, I think he could be a top 25 defenseman this year if he can stay healthy, which is incredible. And his ADP was so crazy low, and he's only owned in 28% of leagues. Do me a favor, guys. If he's available in your league and you're not loving your defenseman a lot, Go ahead and add Mike Matheson. He's a top power play guy in Montreal. His peripherals are great. So I don't know what you're waiting for, but add him as fast as you can. Then I have Matisse Ekholm, who looks really good with the Edmonton Oilers last year. I think he wasn't enjoying his time anymore in Nashville. He wasn't loving not being on a competitive team. He gets to Edmonton, suddenly starts putting up points left and right. Now, I'm not saying it's going to be the case again, but he is playing on a pairing with Evan Bouchard, which is really, really great. And I think that Ekholm is going to have himself a really nice year this year. I think at 28% rostered, you can do worse than grabbing Matthias Ekholm. Then Jeff Petrie at 21% rostered. Now, he's probably not going to get any power play time in Detroit this year. But Jeff Petrie is someone who's pretty good for peripherals. Like, he's going to put up shots, blocks, and hits. So if you're in need of a defenseman that can do that for you, Jeff Petrie is actually a pretty good option. Oliver Ekman Larson is the next guy I'm looking at. He's actually manning the top power play right now in Florida with Montour and Ekblad both injured. Now, I expected Forsling to man in that top power play, so that's a little bit disappointing for anybody that drafted Forsling. However, if Oliver Ekman Larson struggles, I'm sure they won't hesitate to put Forsling on that power play. But for now, Oliver Ekman Larson might be an interesting add in deeper leagues because he is getting top power power play deployment. And Caitlin Addison of the Minnesota Wild. Now with Jared Spurgeon injured, he's definitely cemented on that top power play once again in Minnesota. Now, he did okay. I think he scored like 40 points or something last year. It just his peripherals sucked really badly last year, right? Like he wasn't doing anything peripheral-wise, which made him not really that valuable. Hopefully this year he can take a step forward, do a little bit more with the puck, shoot the puck maybe a bit more, get a bit more peripherals, and potentially get points more frequently to increase his value. If you're looking for points though, he's somebody that you could be adding at only 8% rostered. And finally, Cam York at only 4% rostered is the top power play guy in Philadelphia. Now, Philadelphia doesn't have a great power play, but with some guys coming back from injury, Notably, Katuri and Atkinson, their power play could get better, and overall, their team could be a lot better this year. Cam York, if he takes a step forward, could actually be pretty good this year. Jumping into goalies now, I'm going to try to go through this a little bit more quickly. These are just guys that are starting goalies for their teams that are not owned in a lot of leagues. Now, I'm not saying you should be owning them in like categories leagues or something like that, where you need really good GAA and you know save percentage, but in points based leagues, pretty much any starting goalie could get you fantasy points. Krell Vimalka should be the starter in Arizona, although I do think Ingram is probably going to get more starts than people think. He's only owned in 1% of leagues right now, so he's definitely somebody to monitor as well. Then I have Phil Grubauer, and he's the only goalie other than UC Saros, in my opinion, that's probably going to get three starts this week. The only other team that has three games that doesn't have back-to-backs other than Nashville and Seattle is Vegas. But Vegas is probably going to alternate starts between Thompson and Hill. So that means Grubauer and Saros have a lot of value this week. So Grubauer, if you want to add him, especially in a points-based league, could get you a decent amount of points. Hopefully he has a bounce back year this year because he looks great in the playoffs. So if he can continue that, he's bound to have a much better year than he did last year. John Gibson, 51%. Anaheim Ducks, obviously they're not a great team. 
but he is a starter over there. Jonas Johansson right now is a starter in Tampa Bay. He's a huge goalie, but he's never been very good. So I'd be a little bit scared to start Jonas Johansson, but he is playing for a pretty good team. So we're going to have to see. If you do have Vasilevsky, he's definitely something that you want to be adding right now. Then Phoenix Copley, both him and Talbot are under 60% owned right now. And I think Copley actually may have an edge to be that 1A type goalie and Talbot the 1B. I think they're going to split pretty evenly though, like 50-50 to start. But I think Copley is probably going to be the one who plays better overall and ends up sealing that job. So if you do have Talbot, I definitely recommend adding Copley as well because they will be splitting starts. And I think Copley is going to play a little bit better. Then Elvis Merzlikens, 14% raw, is a starter in Columbus. Their backup is Spencer Martin, so I don't think he's going to start that many games. Elvis Merzlikens, definitely uh, grab him if you're in a deeper point space league. He's going to be getting a lot of starts this year. Same with Samuel Montembeau, probably gets less starts than Merzlikens because Jake Allen's still a thing. But Montembeau was the better goalie last year, and I expect him to be the starter for Montreal this year. Peter Mrazek, I expect him to be the starter in Chicago this year. He probably gets a season opener against Pittsburgh on Tuesday. So, you know, if you're in a points based league, it's probably not the worst ad in the world. Capo Kakinen is a starter in San Jose, probably splitting starts with Blackwood a little bit as well. But I think Capo Kakinen will get more starts than Blackwood will. And finally, Arvid Soderblom. Chicago is the only team that opens the season Tuesday and Wednesday with back to back games. So, if you're in a points based league, you could pick up Soderblom as well as Morazic, and you have two starts both Tuesday and Wednesday. But Soderblom, to me, is a streamer for now, but if he does end up playing better than Morazic, could end up getting more starts down the line. And that's it, guys. Thank you so much for watching all the way through. I'm so excited to be back doing regular season content once again this year. I hope you enjoyed the video. If you did, leave a like and hit that subscribe button, and I'll catch you in the next episode of Fantasy Tech.